Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at Fable from Oath Playing Cards and legendary designer Lotrek. This deck uh, was released back in the middle of 2019, and it really highlights some of the skill that Lotrek has, specifically in the printing and production of playing cards. He really is a master in that area. And among all of the decks that he's presented, uh, he claims that this is one of his most complicated decks to print. So very excited to jump into it, find out how he did on the design. All right, starting with the tuck case. It's done on a matte stock in a deep, deep maroon color, and it's covered with both gold and this black foil. And if you zoom in really close, hopefully you can see this, there's a beautiful texturing that goes on on that maroon background and on really the entire tuck case. Uh, almost designed to look like uh, like leather that you'd find like on a book or something like that, like a leather bound book. Uh, it's a really cool texture. I love it. it. Gives it just a great feel to the overall tuck case and just ups the luxury that much more. Uh, the foiling gives you the design here. You have Fable written in this kind of Arab inspired font uh, in the center and playing cards at the bottom. And then a beautiful sort of asymmetric uh, gold foiled line with just tons of detail, almost like lace, uh, like a strip of lace that's going up the side. And then an extra little element up here where you see that black foil just shining. It's a really beautiful color combination. I, the color combination in particular, I think is really what drew me to this first, but the level of detail that he achieves in the foiling really just takes it to the next level. Uh, as you turn to the side, you got Maestro finish. That's the finish that he uses on the cards. Some more black and gold uh, elements there on the sides. On the other side, just a really fancy pattern in black foil running down the side. Bottom has your ad copy. You can see these are designed and produced in Greece and it's a limited edition of 450 decks. It is also hand numbered at the bottom right there by the Oath logo. So I've got number 108, just done in really thin gold uh, pen. The top, this has more continuation of that golden black design and the inner flap is more of the same. Nothing printed on the interior of the tuck case, but you can see some of the embossing that's done in the tuck case. Nice, deep embossing. So very luxury feeling tuck case. Uh, beautifully done, very much in keeping with the great work that Lotrek does on all of his tuck cases. Uh, just a fantastic job. So there's the tuck case, but let's take a look at the cards. And we'll start with the backs here. Now it's done on this black cardstock, deep black, and it's a black core cardstock. Uh, what that means, you can turn it to the side here. Sometimes if you have a black card and you look on the side, you'll see that the center of the paper is white, uh, but the card face is black. He uses a black core though here, and you'll see there's no white glinting on the end, ends there. And what that means is that you avoid that issue that a lot of black edged cards get with the chipping around the edge. Uh, because if you just chip into this, there's just more black underneath. So you don't get that problem with these. Great touch uh, if you're gonna use that dark card face. Uh, I wish more designers would do that. Not sure if there's a cost increase or something associated with it, but love that he did it here. Uh, and the back is all done in three different colors of foil. So you have this sort of black or silver foil, it looks silver here, but this dark foil down the center, and then you have the gold foil, and then little blocks of maroon foil on here as well. So another great color combination, very much in keeping with what we saw on the, uh, on the tuck case, and in the same design as well. This stripe design and these lace patterns here were really kind of where the design of the entire deck started. He just drew this from uh, quite simply just a piece of Greek cloth that he found. It was a little swatch of cloth. I'll put a image of it over here. Uh, but this one simple strip of lace uh, was what really inspired the entire background, uh, the back design here and exploded into the deck as we see it now. Uh, but you've got that diagonal line that's bordered by the two lace strips, more of those ornamental elements inside, and then the two blocks of maroon foil bordered by intricate gold detail. And if I zoom in, you can see just how skilled the application of that foil is. It's really beautifully done. All the detail just pops out beautifully on this. Finishes out with a nice thin black poker border uh, for a really stunning look. So that's the back design of the cards. Uh, the faces of the cards are also done in all black. Uh, you get a pair of jokers 
They both feature a juggling mermaid, uh, one more in red, one in this sort of turquoise blue color. Uh, just very simple uh, design to it, very clean. So there's your two jokers. And then into the rest of the deck, and we'll start with the Ace of Spades. Fully custom all of the cards in this deck. The Ace of Spades features this uh, sort of fountain uh, with what look like peacocks sitting on either side of it. Uh, very much kind of a Persian or Arab inspired design, uh, kind of has that feel to it. Uh, you have the June 2019 for when the deck was produced, uh, the moon over the top there sleeping, and then Oath playing cards at the bottom. The color scheme is done in these turquoise colors and then not quite that deep maroon, but maybe more of a little bit brighter red on this. Uh, and then lined in gold. Have that turquoise ace of spades in the corner. And what's really interesting about this and the colors that he was able to achieve, uh, this is really where the complex printing process comes into play. Now right off, you'll notice that against the black background, these colors just really pop out, almost as if they were just painted on top. Uh, kind of like if you see a plastic card. But these were done with the classic printing technique and the way he did this was to print a couple of layers of white ink underneath and then lay the color on top and by doing that multi-stage process he's able to really achieve these super bright pops of color even against that black background it's a beautiful color on these uh, and I love the design as well uh, the pips themselves are pretty standard shape they're just done in this sort of two-tone so you have one side that's sort of a forest green, the other side that's that turquoise color. The blue cards all done with the turquoise pip and index. And you can see as we go through these, they're uh, regular numerals as we're used to them, but they have that very uh, Persian flair to them with the accents and things like that. Makes them a little harder to read for me for gameplay, but gives them a very elegant look nonetheless. There's the eight, nine, and 10. Otherwise pretty standard layout on all the pips. Uh, the court cards are going to be familiar, but also completely custom at the same time. So they have the classic uh, shape, uh, classic poses, cl you know, elements in their hands, everything. They're definitely going to be recognizable as courts, but Lotrek's done a great job completely redrawing these from scratch and giving them lots of bursts of color. You've got the gold background, the turquoise and reds, explosion of color and the detailed patterns in the outfits. Uh, while still maintaining that two-way design. One of the things I like that uh, Lotrek does on his custom court cards also is to add the shadowing in the faces. Uh, really deep shadowing, really bold shadowing, much more so than you'd see like on a classic bicycle court, uh, and gives just a really interesting expression to all the cards that you don't always see. Now here's the Ace of Diamonds. All four aces are gonna feature larger pips in the center and kind of a scene around them. So this one just has the diamond surrounded by a couple of trees with the sun high in the sky. And then the red cards swap over to a different color. So we had the green and blue uh, split pips for the uh, traditionally black cards. These are gonna be more of a red and sort of orangish gold. So there's your diamond pips. And then down into your diamond quartz, more of the same what we saw with the spade quartz. There's your Ace of Clubs. Now we're back into nighttime. So we had daytime for the red cards, nighttime for the black cards. This time with a club surrounded by a couple of trees, now with the moon in the sky. And then back to the green and blue uh, shaded pips. Into your court cards. Beautiful. I like the angry expression that he was able to achieve on the king of clubs. And then back to the daytime for the hearts with those golden trees and the sun in the sky for the Ace of Hearts. And your two-tone pips down to your court cards. So that is the deck. Uh, now, as far as handling, this is a really interesting deck, the stock that he was using. Uh, it's meant to be kind of a velvety feeling stock. And I admit, I was a little bit shocked when I pulled out the deck between the black edges that you see here and everything and the super thin velvet stock that he used, I had for a split second thought that it was like a plastic car, but it's definitely not. It's a linen stock, has that nice natural feel, not the overly stiff feel that you get with plastic cards, but still a really, really thin uh, stock with a kind of smooth finish on it. 
Uh, it handles, I would say, reasonably well, cuts very, very smooth, uh, shuffles beautifully, riffles through very nicely. Uh, fans are definitely a little bit on the clumpier side, maybe because of the application of the foil on the, on the card backs, but still not bad considering that you have that three-tone foil on the card back. So very interesting feel to the decks, super, super thin stock, and yet at the same time has kind of a durable feel to it. Uh, so definitely like the handling of these cards, even if it's not a classic cardistry deck or anything. Uh, now that gets down to uses of the cards. Now look, these are a premium deck of cards. They don't come cheap. So by and large, the majority of people are probably gonna use this as a collector's deck, not even open the thing. Uh, and I think that's where, you know, out of the 450 decks that were produced, I'm guessing that's where 440 of them are gonna go. Uh, but uh, I think it would be, if you wanted to use this deck, a fun deck to use for really amped up and elegant gameplay. I think that would be the secondary use of this. But by and large, obviously, this is going to be a collector's deck that's going to look stunning on a shelf. So that's it. That is the look at Fable from Oath Playing Cards. Hope you enjoyed this look. Definitely a special deck in my collection and glad to get a chance to share it with you guys. Let me know what else you want to see and make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. And I'll see you for the next one.